I rented a girlfriend online to go home for the new year. When I arrived at the agreed place, it turned out to be my boss Willow. At that moment, I just wanted to run, but Willow had already noticed me. I was wearing the agreed green hat on my head. We both fell silent. I remembered that before the New Year holiday, I was severely criticized by this person in front of me. She said that this project was very important. I had been given opportunities before, and if I didn't improve, I should get out. I was shaking. Not that I was timid. Willow is the youngest executive in my company. She is beautiful and has a good figure, but her demands are quite strict. Almost everyone is a little afraid of her. But she is so strong that it's terrifying, except for her bad temper. There is nothing that could be disputed, strong and terrifying. This is our private evaluation of her dot dot and now, the root cause of my nightmares is standing right in front of me. And she's here as my temporary girlfriend. It really feels like the heavens want to destroy me. Willow adjusted her glasses, is it you, who rented a girlfriend on the app? Her tone sounded like, is it you, who leaked the company's secret to the opposition? I, yes, but the user who accepted my request was called I have big breasts. I speak first, Willow reluctantly said, it's me. I was both scared and amused. What do we do now? What's your rental requirement? To go home with me for the new year, pretend to be my girlfriend to meet my parents, daily wage, work one day counts as one day. Willow fell into thought. Then, surprisingly, she agreed. Okay, later I found out why Willow agreed. She was being pushed so hard to get married that she didn't dare to go home. She was worrying about what to do during the new year. Her good girlfriend took the initiative to help her out. Her girlfriend accepted my request on the virtual dating app. Didn't tell her the specifics of the task, only said that it would allow her to escape from blind dates and the pressure to get married. Willow thought, just pretend to be a girlfriend for a day, take a few photos together, and send them to the elders to deal with it. Unexpectedly, I proposed to go home. She thought about it carefully. Isn't this a great chance to completely escape from blind dates? So she, agree, this development was unexpected. On the way home. I quietly opened the dating app and sent a message to I have big breasts. I speak first. What's going on? Sister, your friend came. The other party said. Yes. Surprised. Unexpected. I. Isn't this fraud? I have big breasts. I speak first. I have three to D. My girlfriend has three for D. You've made a huge profit. Aren't you satisfied? And we haven't really talked much. And we haven't exchanged photos before. So just pretend she accepted your request, there's no difference. I, but, little brother, I'm actually quite helpless too. Don't look at my sister's cold face, she's actually really pitiful, she's almost 30 and still single, if no one wants her, she have to become a noon, woo. Seeing this message, I couldn't help but sneak a peek at Willow, she caught the corner of my eye. George, did you bring your notebook home? I did. Your plan needs to be completely redone, don't blame me for not reminding you. Willow, if you can't do it well this time, the company will find someone to replace you, you weigh it up yourself. In the app, she was still talking about how pitiful Willow is. I replied angrily, if no one wants your sister, why not find a reason from herself? Regardless of how disgruntled I was, Willow was very professional. She bought local gifts and fruits, and when she met my parents, she immediately changed her attitude, addressed them as uncle and aunt respectfully and sweetly. I was completely taken aback, who has ever seen such an innocent and cute willow? My parents didn't suspect a thing and were very satisfied with her. Anna, finally we meet you. You're so beautiful, Anna. I tapped her on the back, signaling her to agree. Mom continued. Anna looks like a good girl at first glance. George has really good taste. George. I tapped her again. That's my nickname. Willow responded quickly. Now that I see you both, I understand where George got his great qualities from. My parents were very pleased with her flattery. With her being so clever, I had peace of mind, certain that we could get through this holiday safely. As it turns out, I was putting my mind at ease too early. After dinner, standing at the bedroom door, Willow suddenly asked me, which room do I sleep in? I was dumbfounded. I had almost forgotten that our house, which my parents had received from their work unit when they first started working, is very small, 
with two bedrooms and one living room, one room for the elders, one for me. Mom came over smiling. Anna, we don't have a guest room. You'll have to share a room with George tonight. Mom, I panicked, that's not acceptable. Then what do you suggest? We can't expect Anna to sleep in the living room, my mother, always being blunt, casually said, you two have been dating for three years now, aren't you here to discuss marriage? Just share for today, tomorrow I'll buy a folding bed. With that, she shut the door with a bang, leaving Willow and me face to face. I hurriedly explained, my mom didn't believe I would really bring a girlfriend home, so she didn't prepare in advance. Willow, who had been smiling all day, probably had a stiff face, and then returned to her usual detached demeanor. What's Anna all about? She sat down in front of my desk, and I instinctively straightened up, as if reporting work. Anna is my ex-boyfriend. We dated for three years, and we agreed to meet our parents this year, but she cheated on me. Willow's eyebrow slightly furrowed. I felt a bit apprehensive, not knowing which sentence I said wrong. I carefully continued. I was depressed for a while. My parents guessed that I had broken up, and they advised me to quit my job and go home. I didn't want to worry them, so I lied to them. Willow, so you rented a girlfriend? Yes. George, I suggest you tell the truth. You can't hide from them forever. I had a relapse of my old problem. Whenever she called my full name, I would shiver a bit. Let's get through the new year first, I'll tell them later. Willow's beautiful eyes were staring at me. The atmosphere was very oppressive, even though I knew this was not a work situation, I still instinctively panicked. I don't know how much time had passed. She asked, are you afraid of me? Let's go to bed. Willow first looked at my messy doghouse, finally deciding to lay on the floor. Of course, I felt bad about letting my boss sleep on the floor, plus she's a girl that she wouldn't trade with me. If I had anticipated that tonight would be an unforgettable night, I would rather sleep on the streets. Before taking a shower, Willow asked me if I had a towel for her, as she had forgotten hers. I was laying the quilt on the bed and casually said, there's a brand new one in the drawer under the bay window. After opening the drawer, Willow looked as if someone had pressed the pause button on her. Where? You check underneath, it might be buried below. Check, she hesitated. I turned my head to check, didn't you find it? Before finishing the sentence, I was flabbergasted. How come the whole drawer is full of underwear? Willow had already averted her gaze. It's okay if there isn't one. There is, there is. I hastily pushed the drawer back in, my toes curling 360 degrees. My mom might have reorganized it, so the place might have changed. Cough, cough. Sure enough, I found the towel on the other side. After Willow took a shower, she smelled enticingly fresh and wasn't wearing those thin-framed glasses that were constantly on her face. I heard that she's severely nearsighted, so I boldly glanced at her several times. Well, when she's not wearing glasses, she's much softer than usual. So, she has double eyelids, and her skin is really tender. After staring for a while, Willow suddenly turned her head, had enough of gawping. How did you know I was looking at you? Willow sneered. You think I'm blind? Aren't you severely nearsighted? Who said that? She put her glasses in front of me. The lenses were thin. She was far from being severely nearsighted. Besides, didn't anyone tell you that even if you were severely nearsighted, you are not blind? I was extremely embarrassed, so she saw all my wanton glances just now. I followed the principle that the more I speak, the more mistakes I make. I hurriedly crawled into my blanket, not wanting to say another word. However, how could I possibly sleep? Once the light went off, all the movements in the dark were magnified. My bedroom was not large, and the floor was right next to the bed. Willow's breathing constantly reminded me that there was a woman in this room, and that she was a 30 for D woman. I didn't dare to chat with her, so I just stared blankly at the ceiling. I stared till midnight and finally felt a bit sleepy, but soon after, I wanted to go to the bathroom. I carefully crawled out of bed. But to get to the door, I had to go past Willow. Her breathing was light, she was probably asleep. As I tried to go around her, something under my feet tripped me up. I stumbled and fell straight onto her. Willow woke up. George, she grinded her teeth. I'm sorry, I just wanted to go to the bathroom. Get your hand off, huh? Hand, my hand. 
Oh. I felt it. My hand is on a soft spot. I was so scared that I sprang up like a spring. Unfortunately, I lost my balance and tripped again. This time, my face fell onto a soft spot. The next day, both Willow and I had big dark circles under our eyes. My parents had gone out early, leaving the two of us at home. The atmosphere was very tense, and we didn't speak to each other. In the afternoon, an announcement suddenly popped up in the neighborhood group chat. Following the notice from the Epidemic Prevention and Control Headquarters, our neighborhood will now be placed under tight control. Please cooperate and stay at home. Community workers are currently sealing doors for everyone. I was dumbfounded. Seal the doors. Now, I called my mom, but she told me that she and my dad had received urgent on-call arrangements from the hospital and couldn't come back. This meant that Willow and I would be alone. Our gazes met, and we both saw the anxiety in each other's eyes. What are we hesitating for? Since we can't leave, let's quickly snatch up supplies in the group chat. I frantically operated my phone and bought a bunch of stuff. Thankfully, it was precise control, and only our neighborhood was sealed. Everything was normal outside, and there were plenty of supplies and manpower. In no time, the community workers had delivered the supplies to the door. When we opened the plastic bag, a small box that prevents humans from procreating excessively slid out first. Three glaring words everyone understood were written on the packaging, blinding my eyes. I stiffened. I could sense that Willow was also stiffened. Her scrutinizing gaze was on my back. A small box felt like it weighed a thousand pounds. I don't know how long it took. Willow, are you waiting for me to make excuses for you since you're not speaking? This. Listen to me. Willow, I didn't buy this. I don't know how it got here. She looked skeptical. I freaked out. Help. How could I possibly buy this thing? I'm not crazy. Whether you're crazy or not. She paused slightly. It's hard to tell. She indirectly hinted at what happened last night. I was even more unable to clear my name. Willow, listen to my defense. No. Listen to my explanation. Look at this chat wrecker. I never asked anyone for this. Willow looked at me playfully. You could have placed an order on your own and then deleted the record. I said, that's not possible. There's no need. She laughed, but I can understand. I sighed in relief. As long as you understand, I'm pretty good looking. And my figure is not bad. It's normal for you to have such thoughts. What thoughts? She blinked, coveting my body. Honestly, I was a bit desperate at that moment. But my desire to win took over my mind. It's just a flirtatious phrase. I can't lose. So my not-so-brilliant mind suddenly took a turn, and I blurted out, if I really had such thoughts, I wouldn't need to buy this. Later, the community told me that the supplies had been delivered wrongly. Our bag was actually bought by someone else. Tears welled up in my eyes, and I almost sang let me say thank you on the spot. I proudly said, see, I'm innocent. But because of that flirtatious phrase, Willow no longer trusts me. She even zipped up her coat to the top and covered her ankles with socks, like a woman who valued her chastity. Today is New Year's Eve. Despite the many awkward situations, the New Year still needs to be celebrated. But facing the huge amount of ingredients left behind by my parents, I had a headache. How about making noodles tonight? I naturally thought that Willow wouldn't be able to cook. Who knew she would roll up her sleeves and go directly to the kitchen? In the next two hours, I was stunned as she cooked a full New Year's Eve dinner. It was unbelievable. Not only it looked good, but it also tasted great. The two of us sat in front of the TV, eating, chatting, and watching the Spring Festival Gala. Unexpectedly, Willow and I had similar interests. The movies we liked, the songs we listened to, all largely overlapped. Our attitudes towards current affairs were also almost identical. It was like meeting a long-lost old friend. We couldn't get along in the afternoon, but now we couldn't stop talking, and our impressions of each other were changing. After dinner, Willow's mother video called. I deliberately played the role of her boyfriend. Her mother was very happy and even added me on WeChat, wanting to send me a red envelope money. I boasted to Willow. Willow, how was my performance? Very good. Shouldn't there be some rewards then? She said, I'm about to send a red envelope in the company chat. You can sit next to me and snatch it. I immediately scooched over. I thought to myself, when she sends it, I'll snatch it right away. I'm 100% guaranteed to get it. As I was ready, 
Willow sent out 200 yuan. I snatched it up immediately, but only got a few cents. She sent another one. This time was better. I got three yuan. I was on the verge of tears. Willow said. Then I'll send another one. She sent. I grabbed. She sent another. I grabbed again. I don't know after how many red envelopes, but I finally got the best of luck. I was overjoyed. When I turned around, I found that Willow was looking at me, a faint smile on her face. Darn it, why does she seem a bit gentle all of a sudden? I felt like I was seeing a different side of Willow. It was as if I had inadvertently caught a glimpse of my boss's other side. Behind her stern demeanor, there was a gentle side to her. I glanced down at the group chat on my phone. The chat was already lively in our small group. Colleague, boss Willow gave out so many red envelopes this year. She's so generous. Colleague B. Right, usually the executives only give out a few for formality. Didn't expect her to be so lavish this year. I was too busy grabbing earlier and didn't notice how many Willow had sent out. I counted in the main group, and she must have given out several thousand. It felt like she deliberately waited until I got the best luck before stopping. There was some teasing in the main group too. Colleague George, you're too powerful. You snatch every single one. Colleague B. Ha ha. I noticed that too. He's in every red envelope, I said. Well, I only got a few cents and a few yuan in the beginning. Colleague A. It's alright. They add up to a lot in total. Colleague B. It feels like he was sitting right next to Boss Willow to grat. Cough. I felt a little guilty as if busted. I quickly sent out a red envelope in the group chat to quell the public anger. As soon as I sent mine out, Willow sent one individually to me, a reward for the actor. That night, Willow slept in my room, and I moved to my parents' bedroom. Before going to bed, I received a WeChat message from her. Boss Willow, what do you want to eat tomorrow? Me. Can I make requests? Boss Willow, making an exception for you. I couldn't help but drool. The ribs were delicious tonight. I want more. Boss Willow, good. There's exactly one bag left in the fridge. I quietly changed her note to, Chef Willow. I texted, I didn't expect Willow would coke. Chef Willow. I live alone. Cooking is a necessary skill. Me. Don't have a boyfriend. Chef Willow. I had one a long time ago, but I'm busy with work. I can't handle it, so I was dumped. Me. I thought you and Makoto were a couple. Chef Willow. Why do you think so? Me. That's what everyone in the company thinks. He's your first subordinate. It's hard not to think in that direction. A lot of people are even shipping you too. Chef Willow, do you guys chat about these in your spare time? Oh crap, did I reveal something? Chef Willow, seems like we need to do more ideological training. What else can I say? I change her note again. She devil. The more you speak, the more mistakes you make. I'll go watch the Spring Festival Gale and make snide comments. But after a while, she texted me again. Just to clarify, I'm just colleagues with Makoto. Through the screen, I can almost imagine her serious expression of explanation. I felt like I was hit in the heart, there's a bit of inexplicable Joe. But this Joe that just sprouted was soon snuffed out by Willow herself. Because the next day, I woke up in my own bed. Her face was right next to the pillow. Willow was awake, watching me expressionlessly. I panicked. I genuinely panicked. My first instinct was to jump out of bed and look at her trembling. Explain. She must have just woken up too. Her voice was lazy and enchanting. I don't know. You don't know again. I struggled to recall what happened, and then remembered. I got up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. However, only my body was awake. My mind was still asleep. I forgot I had moved to the master bedroom. I subconsciously returned to my room. I fell asleep once I touched the bed, completely unaware of the person next to me. In response to my explanation, Willow didn't believe me at all. I tried to pass the blame. Willow, you can't blame this all on me. Haven't you noticed there was another person next to you? She lazily said, I don't move around when I sleep and I slept deeply last night. After the chat we had last night, I trusted you enough not to lock the door, but I didn't expect. You were really daring, George. I'm innocent. I swear it was unintentional. Willow sat up. One long leg raised, her hand resting on her knee. She wasn't wearing glasses. And her long hair was slightly messy, making her look lazy. George, 
It seems I need to remind you, Helm. Even if you manage to possess me by any means, I will not help you make the planning scheme. I was silent. I am not sure about me being a dog, but Willow is definitely one. If she wasn't my leader, I would have thrown her out of the window. I took my laptop and returned to my parents' room, not wanting to see her for a moment. I opened the planning scheme, but felt completely lost. Thinking that this is something she asked me to redo annoyed me even more. I was typing furiously, appearing to be full of ideas. However, I was just running to my best bud. He was probably still sleeping and didn't respond. But after pouring it all out, I felt much better, and I refocused on my work. An hour later, just as I was getting into the swing of things, my phone vibrated. I clicked on the message, is it your harsh, selfish, cold-blooded, inhumane but slightly good-looking female boss, I had just opened my mouth to laugh. Then I felt a cool breeze, I slowly looked up. Willow was leaning against the door frame, watching me. The scene was awkward for a moment, I felt like I couldn't clear my name even if I jumped into the yellow river. Good. Really good. Chinese good buddies, godlike teammates. I'm not sure how much Willow heard. I cautiously asked, what are you doing here, calling you for lunch? Willow is amazing. You go ahead. I'll be right there. But she didn't budge. George, I have a question for you. Don't ask. Willow chuckled, rigid, cold-blooded, inhumane. Well, looking at how scared you are, I didn't plan to hold you accountable. Really, is it that fair? But you must explain clearly. Her tone shifted. A bit good-looking means what? Just a bit? Boss, are you focusing on the wrong thing? It's your gaze that's wrong. Willow pointed at herself. I hope you understand. I'm more than just a little good-looking. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Willow is super good-looking. She was reluctantly satisfied. Let's eat. I let out a breath. For the next few days, everything was peaceful between us. In order to fully understand the project, I put in a lot of hard work. Although it was a vacation, I worked overtime and stayed up late more than usual. Willow really didn't give me any advice. She focused on being a chef every day. One night, I worked until after midnight before going to sleep. But as soon as I lay down, my stomach started to growl. Unable to sleep due to hunger, I texted Willow. Me? Leader, are you asleep? She devil. No, go ahead. Me. I have calculated that it's not looking good as it's already this late. She devil. Enough, go eat. Me. But eating now, you will get fat. She devil. No, as long as I eat fast enough, the calories can't catch up with me. Makes sense, no wonder she's the leader. But then I thought, what should I eat? There aren't many snacks at home, so I contacted Willow again. Me? Boss, is there a midnight diner? She devil. I've already laid down. Me? I want to eat your yawn con noodle. She devil. I've already laid down. Me? It's really delicious. The lard is the soul. Every noodle is covered with fragrance. She devil. I've already laid down. Me? The more I think about it, the hungrier I get. Really? She devil. Shut up. Alas, it seems that I won't be having yawn con noodles tonight. But not long after, I heard the sound of sliding doors in the kitchen. I rushed out. Boss Willow. Good evening. To meet at this moment is truly fate. Willow didn't care. She just snorted coldly. What are you doing in the kitchen? I asked with a grin. You tell me. She rolled up her sleeves. The incandescent light casting a glow on her arms, a piece of lard was taken out. Do you want more or less green onions with your yonkun noodle? Due to my daily focus on the project, I couldn't keep an eye on the group chat constantly, so Willow took full charge of the meal picking at home. Luckily she was the chef, she knew better what to buy. Today, while I was madly working on the TPT, Willow poked her head in excitedly. George, ah, as soon as she called my name. I reflexively stiffened my back, I grabbed chicken legs and pork belly today. That's awesome, Boss Willow, you are truly a lucky star. I admire you so much. Well, it's not that hard, she feigned modesty for a moment. Also, I've been thinking about something these past couple of days, what is it? Considering how hard you're working, I'm considering giving you some guidance. Me? Oh, it's okay, I've made an arrangement with Sarah today. Clients like her proposals, 
I asked her to give me some advice. Sarah is a female colleague of mine who is a few years older than me and has rich work experience. Upon hearing this, Willow's face fell. Then you go find her. She slammed the door with a bang. I was a bit confused. Was she angry because I went to Sarah? First, rule out the possibility of jealousy. Most likely because I asked for external help. As a leader, she might feel that I'm being lazy. While I was considering explaining to her, a call from Sarah came. We started to chat about work. Suddenly, the person who had just slammed the door came back. George, don't blame me for not reminding you. If you do like that, it won't pass in the end. Me, Sarah on the phone. Who, who's talking? I asked quietly, were you eavesdropping outside the door? Willow crossed her arms and proudly said, just passing by and happened to hear it. Sarah, wait, this voice sounds so familiar. George, who's next to you? Willow raised her eyebrows. George, everyone in the company calls me that. I gestured to Willow to leave as I was afraid Sarah would notice. Sarah still hadn't realized the danger. George, who is it? This voice sounds so familiar. It sounds like Boss Willow. But I know it can't be Boss Willow, haha. -ha. It is me, you guessed right, but there's no reward. Willow directly came stand behind me, coldly looking at Sarah in the screen. Sarah was dumbfounded just like she had a network lag. Then the next second, she abandoned her teammate me and hung up. Willow sat down next to me. Ironically, now that she left, let me help you take a look. Is now the right time to talk about this? I rubbed my forehead in agony. Boss, you know our colleagues might get the wrong impression. You can explain it to them later. Don't make it seem so easy. It's the holiday, yet you're at my house. Do you like Sarah? She suddenly asked. No. What I meant is, as a colleague, I really like her. That's all. Do you like anyone at the company? No. Then what are you afraid of? She calmly said. Rumors will die out sooner or later. Isn't it? Something about what she said sounded profound. But I didn't have time to think about it. Willow had already started going through my plan. Here. I have a better suggestion. Work matters most. I put aside everything else and quickly followed her line of thought. Willow gave me a long explanation. I have to admit, she's indeed incredible and really helped me improve many parts. In the end, she picked up her phone. I made a plan before. You can use it as a reference. I've sent it to you. Take a look when you have time. Okay. Thank you, Boss Willow. I opened the desktop version of WeChat and her message was at the very top. The note on her contact read she devil, she frowned. I instantly broke out in a cold sweat, there was no way to explain it. Last time, I was able to blame my friend for the voice message since it was him who spoke the words, after all he doesn't work at our company, so he wasn't afraid of offending her. But this time, I was caught red-handed, however, Willow was not upset. She said, on the first day I came to your place, I asked you if you were afraid of me. You said no. But I think you were lying. I noticed afterward that sometimes you were a bit stiff in front of me. George, are you really that afraid of me? I braved myself and said, Yes, because you were strict and I'm actually quite afraid of being scolded by you. Over time, I've formed a habit. Every time you call my full name, I feel like you're going to lecture me again. And I start to panic as a conditioned response. Willow was thoughtful. There were no emotions readable from her face. After a while, she stood up. You have been working hard these days, I've seen that. Do a good job on the scheme, I will commend you in the company. She paused before adding, in the future, I'll try to call your name less. How's she going to call me then? Will it be like how Morong Yun Hai called Ji Yu Chuan? By simply shouting hey. I don't mind though, after she left, I took a breath of relief. Under Sarah's gossipy questioning, I explained what had happened. Sarah is good at keeping secrets, so I wasn't worried. She told me that Boss Willow never personally mentors anybody, so she made an exception for me. It seemed that Boss Willow had made quite a few exceptions for me these past few days, ever since the house had been sealed. She had been the one cooking, as I was busy writing the proposal. I often couldn't help her much. Feeling more and more guilty, I quickly put down my laptop, intending to help her out in the kitchen, you came at the right time. The house was filled with fragrance. Willow was serving up my favorite sweet and sour ribs onto the table and said, Let's eat. George. 
Regarding Willow beginning to call me by my first name, I was a bit startled, but she, the person in question, was quite calm. She felt it was easier on the tongue. I gave in, as long as it was easier for the boss. Willow also didn't allow me to call her boss Willow in private. After a long discussion, I decided to call her sister Willow, with her guidance. I quickly finished the proposal, there was only one day left for the holiday, I could finally recklessly watch videos. Willow and I watched a few highly rated horror movies. And the result was, at night, even with the lights on, I couldn't sleep. Willow was taking a shower, as I listened to the sound of the shower, I considered chatting with her later to make myself sleepy. However, before she finished, suddenly everything went dark. A power outage, you must be joking. The mysterious phenomenon of power outages while watching horror movies actually happened to me. I was a bit concerned for Willow, after all, she's a girl. I turned on the flashlight and went out. Willow, are you done yet? The shore sound had stopped, but through the door, no sound could be heard from the bathroom. Those bloody scenes from those movies came to mind. I wasn't accustomed to the dark and felt a chill all around. I knocked on the bathroom door. Willow, say something. Willow swiftly opened the door and threw herself into my arms. She was trembling. The invincible she-devil could also have moments of fear. I comforted her. Don't be scared. I'll go flip to circuit breaker. I'll go with you, she said. Willow held on to my hand. The circuit breaker did not respond. Everything outside the window was pitch black. The entire neighborhood was in a power outage, as expected. The property manager said in the group chat that they were repairing it, but they weren't sure when it would be fixed. I suggested, just in case, let's turn off the light on the phone. It uses up too much battery. The moment the flashlight was turned off, the room plunged into total darkness. She became more anxious. It's so dark. It's okay. I'm here. Willow moved closer to me. I could smell the fragrance of the shore gel on her skin. Stay with me. She whispered. I'm really scared. Okay. I held Willow's hand tight. I won't leave. We sat on the sofa, very close to each other, fingers intertwined the whole time. We talked about a lot of things, each other's past experiences. I quickly distracted her from her fear. Turns out Willow wasn't always so strong. Being a girl, she had to strive more to reach where she is today. After that, we talked about the movies we watched and the cities we've been to. At this moment, she was very reliant on me, almost fully leaning on me. Right as we were deeply engrossed in our conversation, the electricity came back. The light was blinding, a dazzling beauty jumped into my sight. Willow's bathrobe was wide open, to be precise, she came out of the bathroom in hurry and her bathrobe was not properly tied, somehow she nearly slipped out of it. And when the light came back on, it became obvious that our clasp hands were a bit inappropriate. I quickly withdrew my hand, okay, you can go back and continue your shore. Willow raised an eyebrow, looking at her suddenly empty hand. Are you so eager to push me away? I just don't want you to catch a cold. The heating in your house is good. I'm not cold. She walked barefoot back to the bathroom. I'll continue showering. If there's anything, just call me like you did earlier. After a pause, she said. George, thank you. Willow gave a small smile. I've almost never seen her smile before. My monk-like inner peace seemed to have been struck. When the proposal was completed, the holiday was over. But our community was still sealed off. Willow and I both took leaves of absence, Sarah, as agreed, kept our secret. However, the news of us cohabiting still leaked out. Because our location was shown, when we applied for leave, someone took a screenshot and shared it. It clearly showed that Willow and I clocked in from the same location. Colleagues who had a good relationship with me all asked me privately. Of course, I denied it, but some people were certain. For example, Willow's assistant, Makoto. My scheme was personally guided by Willow. The submission was just a process, and it would be approved immediately once it reached her. However, the scheme was driven back at Makoto's level. Makoto had mentioned me in the project chat. Did you do this by yourself? Me, of course. CEO office Makoto. There's a significant difference between this and the version you had before the holiday. I refuse to believe that someone can improve this much just after taking a break. What is he implying? CEO Office Makoto, there are a lot of elements in your scheme that I've seen before. 
I need you to give me an explanation. The company absolutely loathes the copying of others' creative work. As he wished, I explained. But he didn't believe me, and even threatened to touch upon this matter in the company's main chat group. I was so angry that I wanted to smack him. You asked me for an explanation, but didn't believe me after I explained. Then why ask in the first place? Willow was not in this small chat group, she was oblivious to this matter. During dinner, Willow realized that I was upset and I told her about it. I thought that since Makoto was her assistant, she would consider the bigger picture and advise me not to be bothered. But unexpectedly, upon hearing the news, Willow's face turned sour. She stood up, saying she was going to make a call. After waiting for a while, the food was getting cold. I went to the door to urge her to eat before making her call. However, I overheard a hushed but intense argument. Yes, I am in George's home. It's my personal matter, none of your business. The scheme is what I taught him to write. Any objections? Makoto, you have no right to be unhappy. I'm officially informing you now. George is mine. No one else can touch him. Later, Willow personally joined the project group Pan personally approved my proposal. The matter was settled. After a week of working from home, we finally got the news that the lockdown on our community was lifted. On the night of regaining our freedom, I was too excited to sleep. Willow was the same dot dot separated by a wall. We kept chatting on WeChat. Female devil, I want to ask you a question. Me. Ask, female devil, do you still think about your ex-girlfriend? Me. She's not worth it. It's a waste of time. I need to look ahead. Willow sent me a thumbs up emoji. She said, I've changed my opinion of you. In the company, you are not talkative and I thought you were an introverted person. Actually, you are serious and positive, and your work attitude is also good. Me. Thanks for your praise, Boss Willow. Me. Actually, I've changed my opinion of you as well. I used to think you were cold-hearted, but I didn't expect you to cook and treat others quite gently. Female devil, I have a secret to tell you. Me. Yes, female devil, besides my family, you're the only one who has ever eaten my home-cooked food. My heart seemed to have skipped a beat, I held my phone, unable to suppress my smile. The feeling of being the exception for someone is addictive, Willow asked. Are you listening to music? I can hear something. Me? Ah. I'm sorry, did I bother you? Female devil. No. What are you listening to? I want to hear it, I shared what I was playing with her. And then there was silence on her side. I thought she'd had fallen asleep, so I went ahead and watched some variety shows. I don't know how long it was before Willow responded. Female devil, I've learned it. She sent a 60-second voice clip. I opened it. She was singing this song. Her voice was low and deep, each syllable hitting my heart. I was going to explode. The air seemed to have turned sweet. Female devil, why am I singing for you on WeChat? Come out. Let's meet in the living room and celebrate the lifting of the lockdown tomorrow. I instantly got up from bed. There was still some alcohol in the fridge. With a wine glass in one hand and a game controller in the other. We were having a blast. Empty wine models slowly piled up. Both of us were gradually feeling a bit titsy. My Mario was hopping up and down, making Willow a bit dizzy. Stop jumping around. She softly kicked my leg. I promptly grabbed her ankle. Why aren't you wearing socks? Your feet are cold. She then casually stretched her foot into my coat, warm. Her tone actually had a hint of coyness, involuntarily. I said, Wiley, can I call you that? Sure. Bolstered by alcohol, Willow leaned into me. George, kiss me. She lost it. She must have lost her mind to utter such words. Willow's eyes darkened. Looking at me expectantly, I bowed my head, granting her wish. The next day, history repeated itself. I woke up on my own bed. Willow's face was close to mine. The difference was, this time, we have crossed the line. Willow hasn't woken up yet, I dare not make a sound. Feeling both anxious and expectant, I hardly doubted that our relationship would progress further. A phone vibrating beneath the pillow. It was Willow's, I quietly moved the phone aside, but caught a glimpse of the message preview on the screen. Makoto. Several days have passed, and I still can't understand. You have always been a believer in staying single and because of that, you've rejected others all these years. Why? I couldn't see the rest of the message. 
like a bucket of cold water, it made me sober up. She believes in staying single. Then what was I expecting? Willow turned around in bed, seeming like she was about to wake up. I quickly grabbed my clothes and fled. During my shower, my mind was a complete blank. Last night, she indeed did not say anything about taking responsibility for me. I had naturally assumed that we could be together for a long time. Maybe living together every day had given us undesired impulses. The community was already no longer locked down. Once I stepped out of these doors, she would still be the high and mighty manager Willow, and I would still be the insignificant shrimp in the company. What am I foolishly hoping for? In the end, I figured it out. Since the result will be the same, then I would take the initiative after I finish bathing. Willow had also awakened and was toasting bread slices. When she saw me, she awkwardly averted her gaze. She was truly feeling guilty. George, I have something to say to you. Ha ha. Coincidentally, I have something to say too. Can I go first? You can say it. I forced a smile and said, Last night was an accident. We're all adults and we understand. You don't have to feel pressured. Let's forget it and not mention it again. Willow was stunned for a moment. You think so? Yes, don't worry. We won't become each other's burden. A burden? Ha. Huh. She lowered her head, silent for a long time. Finally, she responded in a low voice. All right, that very day. Willow left. I had gotten used to exchanging messages through a wall for over 10 days. After she left, there were no punctuation marks left on WeChat. On the contrary, the chat groups in the company started to discuss her again. A colleague posted a photo of the corner of the president's office and said, Manager Willow is back. Don't slack off anymore. Guys, in the photo, she was back to the image I remembered. Dressed in a suit, wearing delicate framed glasses, looking both professional and calm, I returned to the company a day later than her. My colleagues told me that my arrival was perfectly timed. Because manager Willow had made a round in the company yesterday, and today she was sent away on a trip to the branch by the chairman. She probably won't be able to return for a week or two. This was a good thing, which meant that I wouldn't have to see her and feel awkward for at least a week. But at the same time, I couldn't help but feel disappointed. The previous 10 or so days of conversations were still saved on WeChat. About cooking, listening to music, playing games, and so on. We shared everything in our lives, but now, the dream was over. The insurmountable hierarchy was the real state between her and me. In order to move on faster, I worked even harder. Most of the time was used for learning and overtime. On the fourth day of Willow's trip, a new refrigerator suddenly appeared in the office. Colleagues started discussing it. Finally, a new fridge. The old one was used for too long, and the food I brought ended up tasting different so moved. Logistics finally heard our requests. Shush. It wasn't logistics that changed it. Then who? It was manager Willow who asked to change it. I couldn't prevent myself from raising my head to listen to their gossip. Hasn't manager Willow always been indifferent to these things? She has a fridge in her office. Why did she suddenly help us to change ours? I don't know. Perhaps someone mentioned it to her. Nonsense. Who would dare to bring this up to manager Willow? Indeed. No one would waste their time going to her to complain about the refrigerator. Sarah shot me a sideways glance. Was it you? It has nothing to do with me. It's you. You posted on your moments last night. And today boss Willow replaced the refrigerator. TSK. Tisk. I was startled and suddenly remembered that I had indeed posted on my moments when I was working overtime last night. I said the office refrigerator smelled so bad that I was almost suffocated when I opened it. Could it be? because of me. Similar things happened later. For instance, I complained about my neck pain from a nap on the desk in my moments. The next day, each person in the office received a folding camp bed, and I shared the link of a new dessert shop opened by a friend. The next day, a bag of desserts was sent to our office, saying it was a reward from Boss Willow. All signs indicate that she's been observing me in secret. I was very distressed and talked to my buddies. They counted the fingers and said that I had fallen for Willow. They persuaded me that since I had a crush on her, I should take the initiative to strive for it. Anyway, our relationship is so awkward now that even if it fails, it couldn't be worse than it is now. I was persuaded. 
I decided to throw caution to the wind and give it a shot. After long deliberation, I sent Willow a WeChat message, Hello, are you busy? There are some private matters that I want to talk to you. Mainly because I feel so uncomfortable, if I don't make it clear, call me back when you are free. I waited for a long time but received no response, of course. There were no calls either. A day had passed and I felt so blocked inside. Even if she was busy, she could always take a look at WeChat, she just didn't want to reply. It seems that I was wishful thinking, around midnight. I decided waiting was pointless, but then, as soon as I switched my phone to silent, Willow's call came in. George, did you send me a message? She asked as soon as the call connected. I didn't see it. What did you send? I was startled. You didn't see it, right? Then how would you know to call me? Willow paused for a moment, then became more anxious. What happened? Your dialogue box was deleted by someone. I didn't see it. Willow didn't hide anything from me. Her business trip was very rushed, and the chairman arranged for Makoto to go with her. As an assistant, Makoto occasionally had the right to reply to her work WeChat on her behalf. Today, while Willow was taking a nap in the car, she let Makoto keep an eye on her WeChat and wake her up immediately if a client sent a message. However, it turned out that the person who sent the WeChat message was me. In fact, Makoto would always take a first look at me no matter what I sent, because I was Willow's pinned contact. Makoto probably deleted my chat box quietly around that time, in the afternoon. Willow was too busy to even have time to set foot on the ground, and she had to entertain in the evening. Just now, she returned to the hotel and wanted to review our chat record, only to find that the pin was gone. She knew that someone had tampered with her WeChat. Willow asked, What did you send me? Not much. I summon the courage, just want to ask you, do you like me? Yes, I do. She didn't hesitate at all. So quick that I was caught off guard. I don't mean the admiration between colleagues, but, George, I like you as a woman likes a man. My heart was pounding. Really? Yes, really. I like you too. That's great. Willow breathed a sigh of relief. George, be my boyfriend. No, she was taken aback. I explained. I know you are a celibate, and I haven't figured out whether I want to have a relationship that is doomed to be fruitless. Willow, celibate, who told you, I told her about accidentally seeing her WeChat. Willow said. Honestly, I did have the idea of disliking marriage due to the pressure from my family, but George, it's also true that I like you very much now. I used to think that living alone was the best state. That the joy I've had over the past half month is unimaginable when living alone, George. You have given me a whole new expectation for the future. I asked. Willow, why do you like me? For many reasons, or in every aspect, Willow's voice was tender, but most importantly, I feel in sync with you. You give me something I've been missing for a long time. What? The desire to share. I smiled, instantly understanding. People only feel the desire to share when they receive feedback that makes them comfortable. And I believe that it is one of the most important prerequisites for love. After a tiring day of work, everyone wants someone they can chat with, listen to a song together, or just tell the other person about a flower they encountered today, or what vegetables they bought. George, Willow said seriously, I had limited ingredients at home before. I cooked whatever I could buy. In fact, I have many other dishes to make, enough for you to eat for a long time without duplications. Would you give me a chance? She broke the rules. She actually tempted me with food. Am I the kind of person who can be easily seduced? Yes, I am. After Willow returned from her business trip, my life turned upside down. To sum it up, I call her Miss Willow in the company during the day and wife at home at night. Respecting my wishes, we didn't tell any colleagues about us dating. In my eyes, Willow was always split every day. Take today for instance, there was a mistake in the business operations and she lost her temper in the meeting room. All of us kept our heads down, not daring to make a sound. After the meeting, my colleague said with lingering fear, I thought we were going to be done in today. I chuckled awkwardly. Because of this mistake, Willow was cold-faced all day. The pressure in the office was so low that everyone dared not speak loudly, fearing disturbing the president's office next door. But after work, Willow took off her coat, threw it on the ground, and stopped me at the porch for a kiss. The image of her losing her temper at the office flashed in my mind. 
Halfway through the kiss, I heard her whisper, I love you so much. It was to split, I said, you scared me today, you know. Her eyes were bright and shiny. Should I apologize, that's okay. So she took off her austere glasses, hugged me again, and while kissing said, honey, don't be angry. Makoto, on the other hand, had been given the cold shoulder for a while. He sent Willow a short essay expressing his admiration. Willow showed me the message proactively. Afterwards, Willow told him all about us. The next day, Makoto came to the company, asked to speak with Willow privately, and was denied. Willow insisted that I be present and absolutely refused to meet him alone. I have to say, on this point, Willow was too good. Regardless of my presence, Makoto's tears were almost coming out. It turned out that he had liked Willow for many years. However, Willow had claimed to be a non-maritalist, rejecting all men. He feared that once he confessed his feelings, he wouldn't even have the chance to be friends. Half a year ago, he had an opportunity for a transfer and a promotion, but to stay by her side, he declined. Makoto was indulged in his dream of self-sacrifice, but Willow didn't care one bit. He felt it was unfair. Makoto asked Willow, if there must be an exception, why can't it be me? Willow coldly said, the moment you chose to play the martyr and emotionally blackmail me, you were out. After you tampered with my WeChat without my permission, I felt nothing but disgust for you. Makoto turned pale. Later, Makoto resigned, disappeared from our world. I heard he wasn't doing very well in another company. After we started dating, Willow took me to meet her best friend, and as soon as we met, I noticed her aura, could it be that you are? I have big breasts, I speak first. Thank you, matchmaker of the century, ha ha ha, you both owe me a meal. I also took Willow to meet my brothers, one of my brothers said, oh, 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 so this is your, I gave him furious looks. Willow smiled, yes, it's me, the harsh, selfish, cold-hearted, inhumane but slightly good-looking female boss. I told my family about Willow's identity. My mom was overjoyed, saying that Willow's character was much better than my lousy ex. However, we were still a secret relationship. I always thought that our relationship would remain under wraps. Until one afternoon, a year after we started dating, I went to lunch with two colleagues. One of them suddenly had a stomachache and left first after pushing his bowl away. It was just me and Sarah left. While we were eating and gossiping, I felt a cold gaze from the entrance. It was Miss Milo. What was she doing here? Obviously, she was jealous. She turned her head silently, as if she hadn't seen me, and walked away with her long legs. I told Sarah that I was full and went back to the office ahead of time. Strangely enough, all of my colleagues were out, and there was no one in the office. Willow was sulking in her office alone. I tried to explain to her that I did not have lunch with the female colleague alone. In a somewhat retaliatory manner, she pulled me, with the door still open, and pushed me against the office table. She kissed me breathless. George, shall I join you for lunch in the future? Didn't we agree? Don't call me George in the office. Well, George, in the past when she called me this, I was quite nervous. But today, I was not only not nervous, but felt a little weak in the knees. She noticed, George, help me take off my glasses. Her voice was filled with seductiveness. The office was empty, and we were kissing freely. Behind us, there was a clatter sound. A folder fell and a few of my colleagues were staring at us in shock. How come there are still people here? I tried to hide. The willow held me tight. I couldn't move. She calmly said, please close the door. Thank you. Sure, sure. My colleague stuttered as he ran to close the door. In the afternoon, the whole company knew, I opened the chat group, colleague, have you guys heard that Miss Willow is dating George? What a surprise. I heard Willow's kiss is amazing. Aw, oh, why didn't I see that? Colleague B. Aw, oh, I want to see it too. Colleague C. Just a friendly reminder. George is in this group. Later on, we got married. When the master of ceremonies asked us to kiss, my colleagues were the most rowdy. The spotlights at the scene were dazzling. I felt like I was back to the day, and I was wearing a green hat and went to keep my appointment. Anne Willow, who went from being my boss, to my rented girlfriend. Eventually, she became my wife. Our future will only get better, and so will yours, 
in front of the screen. 